Okay, everyone, uh, welcome to Controls uh, Systems Analysis and Design. Uh, today we have a basic linear uh, spring mass damper system, of which we have to find a transfer function for. So, uh, given an input force of F of T and an output of X of 2 over here, what is the transfer function? So the first thing we have to do for this problem <coughs> is actually define our differential equations that represent the motion of each one of these blocks. Uh, the surface is frictionless. Uh, we have a spring constant, K, and a damping constant. Uh, we're going to call it F uh, of V1, uh, because a damper is exactly like friction in itself. Um, but you can also use the, but in, usually in these linear systems, the nomenclature is F of V1. Okay, so moving into this, first you have to do kind of a free body diagram of sorts for all the forces that are acting on any one of these bodies. So at M1, what we're going to do, you've got this thing up here. Uh, here we are. So we're going to take M1, and then with the force applied to it, we're going to change this to F. If you have a force applied to a body, then the spring is going to resist the motion. And if we, do, and since a spring is in relation to the distance that it's pulled, how hard it forces, it's times X, so the distance of X1. And then for the damper, it has a relation with, uh, Velocity, so we have FD1, which is the damping constant, times velocity, <coughs> which is S times X1. So S is the derivative of a distance. So you could consider this S uh, the Laplace of X dot. So I'm just going to skip the step of the derivative so that we can move right into this because of the equation solving. But you just have to remember that S is a derivative. But then at the same time, if you have a force applied to an object, an object is put into motion, resisting that force, you have inertia. So we're going to have m1 times the inertia, which is s squared, which is the acceleration times a times x1. All of these are of s, just like this up here, of the same kind of a thing, so like f of s. So what I've done is I've taken these values, and I've basically done the Laplace for all of them which is a really basic thing to do, and I'm not going to go into that, but basically you can just say that all of these are of S, but I'm ignoring it because since everything is of S, I'm basically kind of factoring it out. So this is for M1, where M1 is just moving. In this case, M2 is actually held constant, so you're basically just looking at this, like it's a solid wall over here, and M1 is moving. Now you have to do the relation for M1 if it is kept still and M2 is moved. So if you move M2, then you've got the spring pulling on it. So K1 of X2, which is the motion of 2, M2. And then you also have the damper, which is going to pull on it, which is F1 of S of X2. And that's what the, the effect of M2 moving has on M1. So if you combine the both of those, then you have M1. You have the force acting on M1. Then you have the resistance, which is its motion... Uh, from its moment of inertia, from its inertia, s squared of x1, and then you have all these other forces over here. So you've got k1 x1, f v s of x1, and then you also have uh, k1 k1 x2 and f v1 of s of x2, and that's the combination of all the forces acting on m1. So if you go ahead and take all of these values and put them into an equation, you'll find that it comes to m1 s squared x1 plus f v1 s of x1 minus f v1 s of x2 plus k1 x1 minus k1 x2 minus f of s is equal to zero. So just like you would in the solids or statics or anything, you basically just sum the forces that are acting on this. And you get this equation right here. And if we uh, sort it out a little bit, you see how I've kind of grouped the S's so that they go from highest power to lowest power? Now I'm going to group uh, the X's. So X1 is equal to M1 S squared plus FV1 S plus K1 plus X2 of minus F v1 s minus k1 uh, is equal to f. So there we are. We have uh, the first differential equation basically for the uh, 
first system of M1. Now for M2, what you're going to do is the exact same thing, only you're going to focus on M2 now. So for M2, I'm going to split this in half a little bit here so you can see the difference here. But M2, what you'll have is if M2 is moving, you set it in motion, then it's going to have the resistance of the spring, which is K1, X2. But And since it's moving, it's going to have a resistance of M2, again, the inertia S squared of X2. It's probably kind of hard to see, I'm sorry. Um, and then the resistance due to the damper, which is F V1 S X2. So this is if M2 is put into motion and is moving. Now, if you hold M2 still, and you just move M1, then you have, again, the, if you move M1 and M2 isn't moving, then you still have the spring and the damper pushing on M2. So that's going to be the spring, K1, X1, which is the amount of force the spring will push on when, K, when 1 is moving. And then moving on, you'll have the damper system, which is S, F, V1 of X1. And since M2 isn't moving anywhere, uh, it's being held constant, and M1 is, oh, sorry, this is M2. Uh, since M2 isn't moving, there's no inertial force. So the inertial force only occurs when you have something put in motion. So uh, I'm going to actually skip the combination of all those forces. You can see how those would add up on one block. I'm just going to go ahead and write the equation because I'm going to space on this page. So M2 S squared X2 plus K1 X2 plus FV1 S squared minus K1 X1 minus FV1 SX1 is equal to zero. Because there's no force, there's no input coming into the system. Everything is resisting, basically. Uh, otherwise, you see on this side, we took the force on the other side. That's because the force is actually an input. So it can be separated from everything else. But all of these are just reactions. So then going ahead and grouping X2, ooh, uh, X1 and X2 again. I'm going to take that X1. Uh, negative K1 minus FV1X plus X2 of M2 X squared plus K. Oh, sorry. Make sure it's in descending order too. It makes it life a lot easier. F1S plus K1. There we go. So now we have these two equations. And you'll see I've got them ordered X1, X1, X2, X2. In order to get the transfer function, you actually have to do a matrix. So uh, we're going to call the columns of the matrix X1, and then the rows of the matrix will be a, a little bit different. I'll lay it out on the next page. But right now, uh, mark these as uh, A11, A12, A21, and A22. So these are the locations of these little chunks inside the matrix, and it'll make sense here in a second. So moving on to the next page here, I'll try to keep some of that in view so you know what's going on. Um, in or so with this layout right here as it is right now, you can take these two equations and plug them into a set of matrices in order to find out uh, what they, the outcomes would be. So if I was to take A11, A12, A21, and A22, and then you take X1 and X2 is equal to F over 0. And if you look at this, this is just the equations we just made. So A11 is this. A12 is that. Equal to F. And then the same thing on the bottom. Uh, minus K is A21. And then MS2, S squared, and so on and so forth is equal to A22. And it is and uh, is equal to zero. And if you were to do matrix multiplication, you'd find out that uh, all of these turn into the equations that you want. So A11 times X1, well, I'll do it with the second row. A21 times X1, or look at that. And then A22 times X2, A22 times X2 is equal to zero. Okay. I'll actually make that official. So there we go. So we have a matrix. But we don't have what we want. Because remember, we're looking for the transfer function where G of S is equal to x2 of s all over f of s. 
So we have to do some manipulation here, but you can't just divide a matrix and move something over to the other side. There's a little bit more that goes into it. So what we do, if you know your matrix math and linear algebra, in order to move x1 and x2 onto the opposite side so that we can solve for what x2 is, because we don't really, we can't really separate it from everything else yet. What you have to do is take x1 and x2 over to the other side. In order to do that, that is going to equal a22 minus a12 minus a21, a11. So as you see, I flipped the matrix. So these two flipped and became negatives of each other. And these two switched. Well, no, these, I'm sorry. These two just became negatives of each other, and these two switched, which happens when you take <coughs> the transpose. This is the transpose, by the way. And the transpose also has to be divided by the determinant of this matrix. The determinant of this matrix is A11 times A22. So, A11, A22, minus A21, A12. So, all of this is the transpose of this matrix. And that's the only way you can move it on to the other side. And then it's multiplied by F0. So we've got the deter In order to take the transpose, you flip, flip the diagonal values, and then you make the other two negative. And then you divide by the determinant. <laughs> now, the determinant in controls, we're actually going to call delta here. And you'll see why in a minute, because this just simplifies the calculation a little bit. So what, uh, you can use a MATLAB solver or something else, or you can do this math in your head, or on, on paper, it's not that bad, or any of this, because you don't have to actually divide this matrix by this value, you just have to take this value. So, in order to get x2, it's the multiplication, it's the row, x2 row, multiplied out, so this is the x2 row multiplied by this is going to be the uh, numerator divided by delta and delta is the determinant of the matrix this right here so it's not bad now if you want to go ahead and take the, uh, the multiplication at the top there you'll see that you have negative a21 times f minus 0 a11 times 0. So A21 times F plus A11 times 0. Which is plus or minus 0, however you want to look at it. It doesn't really matter. Um, but you see that we've got that on, on top. And then the determinant, uh, it's going to be a little bit longer, but uh, if you put it into your favorite equation solver, I'm just going to go ahead. Uh, it's going to be a delta. I'll just I'll solve this out. A21. Uh, putting in the values for A21 and A11 and A22 and so on and so forth, solving this all out, you'll end up with negative, negative K1 minus F1 of S, or S times S, times F, all over M1, M2, S to the fourth, plus M1, FV1, plus M2, FV1, S cubed plus K1 M1 plus K1 M2 times S squared is equal to uh, is, <coughs> uh, is equal to X cubed. So now we've got an equation that we can actually work with. But remember, we need X2 over F as shown up here x2 over f is what we're going for in order to get the transfer function. Well, there's our f, so all we got to do is divide it out and take it on the other side. Um, so if, this is basically our transfer function right now. If you want to do it, this is this is still equal to delta, by the way. We're going to call this delta. And if you have uh, the Norman Nice controls uh, controls book by Norman Nice, uh, the nomenclature is delta inside of that book. So then your final transfer function, x2 all over f is equal to f e1 s plus k1 because you just distribute this negative through all over delta <laughs> um, so then if you want to go ahead 
and simplify it a little bit more, you're, and I'm not going to show all that math here, but you'll see that it is actually the final answer is actually equal to x plus one over s to the fourth plus two s cubed. So not too bad of a deal there. Is equal to over f function. Um, the reason these values came up, uh, if you're using the Norman Nice book, if you look at the Norman Nice book, this is actually problem 2.24 in the Nice. This is the final answer. The final answer is because uh, these the m1, m2, and k and uh, the damping ratio or constant all had values inside the problem. Which would then sub into this uh, equation right here in order to simplify this all out. But uh, I didn't use values; I did it all symbolically. So this would be your actually your uh, transfer function up here with f moved over there, or this basically would be your transfer function. But then you plug in the numbers and you end up with this. So that's how you uh, take and find the transfer function from a spring mass amplifier.